The nation is ready to talk and this is Talk of the Nation. A warm, hearty welcome to you indeed. They call me Hilda Basana Munjebo and my co-pilot is called Nanda Shipaho. Under the microscope tonight is the general state of domestic tourism. Well, it's an open secret that Namibia is a prime tourism destination attracting hundreds of thousands of visitors every year from Africa and abroad. The past festive season Fresh in the minds of many witnessed an influx of tourists to Namibia. Right now, many are making plans for the Easter holidays and beyond. For this week, as all roads lead to Oshikati in the Oshana region for Namibia's 23rd independence celebrations, the excitement is for both the travellers and hosts. And that means meeting expectations, more so for those in domestic tourism. And if you've not heard, the country is abuzz with Namibia's chance to host the World Adventure travel summit later this year. Preparations are in full swing to ensure that the country indeed delivers. Well, I'm not here to preach, but I have experts in this field with me in the studio to look at the general state of tourism in Namibia. First and foremost, I'd like to introduce to you Mr. Digu Naubeb, who is the CEO of NTB Namibia Tourism Board, the central nerve of marketing for Namibia. Good evening, sir. Welcome to yeah. Talk of the Nation. Good evening. Secondly, I'd like to introduce to you Madame Gita Petzold, the CEO of the Hospitality Association of Namibia, a body that guides pricing and standards amongst other things in domestic tourism. Good evening, Madame Petzold, and welcome to Talk of the Nation. Thank you very much. Last but not least, I'd like to introduce to you Madame Tange Dapewa Kwa, the manager of research and business development at the Namibia Airports Company, the NEC. Good evening, ma'am, and welcome to Talk of the Nation. Good evening. We are delighted to have you here and I'm sure the nation is eagerly awaiting to hear what you have to say. But before we go there, I'd like you to hang on because I have not emptied my bag of surprises as yet. We'll also have a chance to speak to Claudine Mouton, who is the co-director of SME Compete, as well as Glenda Manthi Hrobler and Tira Nangolo of Namibia Tourism Expo. And finally, Lizette Foote, the general manager of Team Namibia. Now we're ready to start and my first question is to you, Mr. Naubeb. Describe for us the opportunity that tourism presents for this nation. Well, as you have rightly said, there is a no, it's an open secret. Basically, tourism offers people opportunities to set up businesses to make profit because that is why people go into business. Secondly, through being able to set up business, they are creating jobs and particular jobs at the lower level where people do not need much of a high academic uh, qualification but more uh, semi to unskilled levels which are actually struggling to get jobs in the country. And it's a known fact that at least a person working in the tourism industry at least supports about five members within the family. Besides job creation which leads again and profit driven businesses which leads to economic development it also enables us to conserve our environment because tourism is very much linked in to nature conservation in our country. So therefore, tourism is seen as a vehicle that helps people understand in conserving the environment, whereas in other countries you find that the tourism has a negative impact uh, if 
overutilize the environment. So basically this in a nutshell, in a brief, the opportunities the tourism industry does present. Madam Petzl, for the members who, who you represent this evening on Talk of the Nation, is there a return on investment for them? Definitely, sir. I mean, first of all, I would always like to say that tourism is not only for a very few people, but it's for everybody. My, my favorite saying still is tourism is everybody's business because tourism is actually a way of life and showcasing the beauty of another place, basically. And that's what we in, in Namibia do. NTB does it with, with um, splendid success um, in terms of selling Namibia abroad and as, as one of the desired destinations. But we have gone quite a far way down the road of also making Namibians understand that discovering your own place and your own environment is also something that, that could be called um, tourism for me. And that's something that we really need to, to look into. And for our members as such, I uh, represent the tourism accommodation side of, of the tourism industry. It's something that, first of all, they have invested heavily in, in building brick and stone. They built lodges or guest yes. farms or bed and breakfast hotels. Um, basically providing some comfort for those people that are traveling, be it in your own town or in your own country, or then abroad for that matter, of people coming from abroad to Namibia, to offer them some hospitality. And that's, that's the warmth of, of, of the, the tourism sector that, that we provide. And it ha does have benefits because obviously once you stay in another person's place, you pay for it. Absolutely. Madame Kua, you come from the Namibia Airports Company. You have a specific view on how many people enter the country, how many people leave the country, how many people fly from, for example, a destination like Morphus Bay to Ventuk. Mm -hmm. Ondangwa must be a fantastic destination mm -hmm. if you just talk about inter-Namibia tourism. Mm -hmm. Maybe you'd like to share those numbers for us? Yes, sure, Hilda. Um, with domestic travel, we've definitely seen a marked increase. What do you mean demand. when you say domestic travel? Domestic travel basically entails traveling within the borders of Namibia. Are we then talking that specifically to Namibians, about Namibians? No, um, it also includes um, the international or regional travelers that we also have within Namibia. Okay. But then um, obviously the bulk part of it being demand for travel within the borders of Namibia by Namibians. So for Ondango, for example, we've seen a 22% increase year on year, um, 2012 on 2011. So that is definitely a marked increase uh, for demand for travel to, to the north. And that's not only for business purposes we've seen, but also for leisure travel. Um, for example, Wildfish Bay, we've seen 66% increase. Um, that already tells us that Namibians are traveling. Namibians really want to explore their country. It's not only for weekend breakaways, but also to really go and go drive around and see what Namibia has to offer. And um, for example, Hosea, which speaks to um, Wildfish Bay, is we've seen 24% increase. And that's again, Wildfish Bay, um, mostly that Namibian. That means people leaving from Ventuk to, to go to Wildfish Bay. Or people coming from Wildfish Bay, Bay coming to Ventuk as well. So that is definitely a, a big, big, big increase. And we're talking numbers of uh, 40,000 up to 50,000 year on year. So that is definitely a big increase that uh, we have seen. And we definitely see the appetite for travel within the Namibian borders by Namibians. We'll speak about the appetite a little later, but for now I'd like to go to a conversation that we had a little bit earlier on regard to the marketing of domestic tourism. I'd like to, you to, inv I'd like to invite you to hear what General Manager of Team Namibia, Lizette Food, had to say on this. What we um, aim to do at uh, Team Namibia and our strategy for the next two years is really to inspire competitive standards for Namibian products and services because we need to give an emotional benefit as well as a rational benefit to consumers locally and abroad. The rational benefit has to come in um, as far as standards are concerned. So whether you know it is standards for products, you know, making them more competitive, or for service providers, you know, to really provide a service that is on international standards, especially in tourism. You know, we cannot expect people to come here and we provide them with bad service. So we need to really focus on the rational benefits. And only then can we start focusing on the emotional benefit. And the emotional benefit really really needs to be driven by the fact that uh, what we offer as authentically Namibian and what, what makes us unique you know, among to all the other products and services that you get across the world. Tourists don't want to come here and find products that they can find in their own countries. We must really focus what sets us apart and what gives Namibia a brand identity. But we cannot do that um, in isolation. It must be linked to rational benefits and competitive standards. 
It cannot be done in isolation. Um, I'd like to come to you, Mr. Nalweb. Maybe talk to us about the organizations that are actively involved in marketing Namibia, both domestically as well as internationally. There's obviously a network of organizations that do this. Yeah. Uh, first of all, in general, uh, to start off with, of course, uh, Namibia Tourism is set up as a national uh, agency by the government through the Ministry of Environment Tourism to drive the tourism marketing agenda. But nevertheless, uh, Tourism Board cannot, as I said, do this all alone. In fact, the people who are in the business, the private sector owners, do market and promote their products as well. So does Air Namibia, our national flag carrier, uh, puts quite a lot of money also in to market Nevertheless, um, the country as a destination, even though they only are more benefiting from the passengers that they are actually carrying at the end of the day, but those who are coming to Namibia through Air Namibia ends up spending quite a lot of, a great deal of money in our own country. So uh, really, uh, however, from our side, there is a coordinated effort together with Air, Nam Air Namibia where we are working on joint pro projects or jo joint management marketing projects in the source countries where we are operating together. And then, of course, we are working closely with the private sector when we are going on roadshows or networks because, in fact, our job is only to sell the experience of the destination. But, of course, we need to carry the travel trade that provides, at the end of the day, the tangible and intangible benefits such as accommodation or bus tours and so forth. So they get onto that and that's how they end up meeting uh, and developing networks to really drive the numbers into the country. So it's a coordinated uh, effort that actually goes into it. The private sector, their contribution specifically then to bringing people here to Namibia. And specifically, there must have been research done on how well Namibia fares as a tourism destination. Just your sense from people who do come here. Um, we are very often told that Namibia seems to be still one of the best kept secrets in the world. We've just come back from, a, well not I, but um, the team destination Namibia NTB led a roadshow to the North America and they had a beautiful clip of sort of quotations from those people that they met at roadshows in Seattle and Chicago and wherever they went and too often people said, Nambi, Nambi, Nambia, where the hell is Nambia? So that they still the, don't know. That is yeah. un unfortunately still this big sort of dark world out there. You know, they don't place Namibia on the map where we want them to, to really see it and, and spark into their face. And that's why, I mean, there are official advertising campaigns that we link in with, with international operators. And tourism is very much an international business. You can't work in isolation. That's what we said right from the start. Yes. Um, so the international campaigns are very important. The domestic campaigns are very important. What, what government or through the body, the Namibia Tourism Board does, and also the private sector. But one of the very important elements that we have not put too much focus on and that we're wanting to, to do now is, is the word of mouth marketing. And I still believe that that is the strongest. So people that come to Namibia exactly. for the first time, they would go home and that's, that's our main goal. They become our ambassadors. Exactly, the word ambassadors. And that we as Namibians need to be ambassadors for our country, tell our story and make sure that when foreigners come to our, to, to our country that they go back as our ambassadors. But that would basically only happen if they really have a good stay here. So our aim and um, objective is to make people so happy and so uh, yeah so so full of life after they leave Namibia that they and Namibia does um, have one of the highest repeater tourism um, figures at the moment um, we are told if we look at our statistics especially from the European market so people do come back for more and that is a good sign already but we need to ride on this and make sure that they become our ambassadors and maybe even more important so that we as Namibians become much more and much stronger ambassadors for our country. Now, when we talk about Namibians, and we talked just about Team Namibia just now, uh, obviously we're all aware that the World Adventure Tourism Summit will be held in Namibia later this year. So I'd like to find out what are the approaches at the moment on the ground that are ha taking place to make sure that all stakeholders get together to best represent Namibia tourism as one integrated entity. I think um, Namibia Tourism Board would obviously uh, be in a position to yeah, answer they, that. The but yeah, the umbrella body. Yeah, we've, yeah, we've seen the program and you can definitely see that all the players within the industry have been included. Um, it's definitely 
up to us um, as Namibians to really market Namibia as the choice travel destination. I think from the Namibia airport company side is really just to assure and reaffirm to the industry that yes, our facilities are ready. We are in a position to take care and really accommodate the number of passengers that will be coming through our airports. And yes, we are definitely up for it to take part and participate within the summit that is going to happen later this year. And um, as Diku and Gida already said, it is an industry effort. Yes. We should all collective. share within this. It is collective. Let's share the risks. Let's share the work. And let's all share the benefits after all so it is definitely something that we're looking forward to participating in yeah it's actually in its own setup a big project that I cannot just take few minutes to yes. debrief you on but as a snapshot basically the idea is that on the 26th of October the opening event would be held here in Vintuk the host city uh, city of Vintuk is responsible for um, arranging that and it will be held in the Parliament Gardens. We are hoping that the, His Excellency, the Head of State, will officiate at the event. Of course, these are still uh, issues under the thinking, but at the same event, we are going to um, expose the local SMEs in terms of cuisine that Namibia does offer. It has to be traditional sort of cuisine because these people are coming from international arena and we don't want to see in our country that we have to uh, replicate what people are used to and after that there would be two days of adventure trip whereby the people will be taken on a one night to spend a one night on route to Swakopmund basically mm -hmm. uh, here we have the Namibian operators that are registered with Namibia Tourism Board uh, it, uh, be it big or small operators yes. that are, have been selected would be participating in Swakopmund obviously people have to be hosted accommodation needs to be provided for uh, there are people whom we have approached and they were asked to make their facilities available that we have source enough rooms that will be placed later on yes. the portal within a week's time to be marketed and people can book it. Um, and then we have a pre-adventure tours, almost on average about seven days tours, which again the travel trade was invited to make proposals to really take these delegates out. Whilst we're in Swakopmund at the same time... Just, just quickly, how many people do we expect roughly? Yeah, we are expecting officially registered delegates to be about 700. By last week, 350 have registered, so we have already passed almost the halfway the, mark. Half the yeah. mark. But we are expecting, because us being a long-haul destination, that most of them will be coming with their spouses as well. So the number will, at the end of the day, Definitely get uh, increase. more. So we're looking also in Swakopmund at the same time, setting up a pavilion where SMEs would also showcase their products. And we are um, going to set up a program very soon whereby the local taxi drivers yes. would have to go through a proper training and be accredited. Of course, if they are not accredited, they would, in fact, for the safety and to be professional in terms yes. of customer service delivery, that because they have to go through a customer service training program, uh, those two would be selected as well. So yeah. as Gita have said, yeah. really, we, are, we have gone out of our way as the private sector and the public sector because it's a joint effort to make sure that at least most quarters of Namibians would be benefiting from this uh, project. Thank you, Mr. Nawab. I'd like to come back to the general manager of Team Namibia, Lizette Foot, who also had something to say about the Adventure Tourism and Travel Summit. Let's take a look. I was really excited um, looking on the Adventure Tourism Travel Summit's website to see the three outtakes um, that they advertise on the website, which is to imagine and to inspire and to invest. And I see a huge connection with Team Namibia in that context. First of all, imagine, um, you know, what, what is uh, on the website is saying, imagine a sustainable future in Namibia. And this is really what we need to focus on, especially in, um, in relation to Vision 2030 goals. So where Team Namibia comes in there is we want to really focus on the developing sector um, with entrepreneurs and SMEs to really look at how we can make them more competitive and really to bring their standards up to an international level that will connect to the tourists, whether it's supply, whether it's quality, um, whether it is just the, the brand identity of those products and the marketing element of it, the packaging, etc. How can we get that group 
into the zone where we can say, okay, they have competitive standards and they can actually compete on an international level. So that is where the Imagine connection comes in with Team Namibia. Then also we need to inspire competitive standards. And as I mentioned before, that really needs to focus on the rational benefits as well as the emotional benefits. And also working together as a nation. Um, at Team Namibia, one of our core values is Ukumwe, which means collaboration. And as this opportunity is such a fantastic opportunity to work together, um, particularly in the context of products and services, because products um, can only be bought to the consumer through services. And if all um, the, the different stakeholders work together, we can actually make a huge difference ahead of the World um, Travel Summit. And then finally, it's really, we need to stimulate consumer confidence in Namibia with Namibian products and services. Because if we don't use it ourselves, how can we expect the international market to do that? And that's where Team Namibia needs to play a significant role, is to market the Namibian products and the Namibian services to the Namibian consumers, first of all, before we actually get to the international market. And we need to do that by demonstrating the rational benefits as well as the emotional benefits. They say charity starts at home. The Namibians have to believe first before we go to the outside world. I'd like to come to you again, madam, because we've spoken about the rating of Namibia. It's excellent, but it's still considered a best kept secret around the world. Um, there are challenges in terms of service delivery and our competitive position. Just speak for a moment in regard to issues specifically around service delivery and how can we improve it in this country so that we can attract more people to come here. Yes, I think we definitely as a nation have to admit that the are uh, there is room for improvement when it comes to um, service delivery. Um, I think it's also very key that as a nation we need to understand um, our tourists. What do they need? What do they want? What is it that we can add to the service delivery just to make it a very um, an experience that they will not forget. Yes. Um, we also need to come out of our silos. We need to come together as industries, mm -hmm. um, as airports company, as Ministry of Home Affairs and Immigration, um, as police, as NTP. So the integration, so it's the integration, integration it is getting together. Exactly. Yeah. So we need to really, when it comes to customer service, um, offer training that is um, relevant to all the industries, even to our accommodation establishments, our restaurants, etc. So it definitely needs to be an industry um, effort. I think we cannot stress it enough that it needs to be an industry effort. And then again, it's important that we have this on a continuous basis. Yes. Um, we need to have, we need, really need to have it entrenched within every Namibian, because um, Gita earlier said that it's every Namibian's responsibility um, to market Namibia. It's also every Namibian's responsibility to offer uh, a great customer uh, service. It's not to say that we need to smile, but we need to know our clients. We need to treat them as a special guests within our country to make sure that they do return. So yes, um, I think there is room for improvement. Um, and I must say, I think Diku can also elaborate on that, on the um, service, uh, customer service that training that they are offering through the Polytechnic of Namibia. And I think it's, it's about time that as the industry, we do come together and participate um, in such programs. I will allow you to speak to that just in a moment. But before we continue, let me bring you this sentiment echoed by one of our viewers in Vintuk. There is much value in networking, whereas you, you come to the Namibia Tourism Expo not knowing what, what is on offer. South Africa, um, people are much more in tune with regards to service delivery. They, um, there's much more competition there. Yeah. Over here, people they feel that they don't have to prove anything, so they don't deliver service. Those are some contributions from the floor. What do you think? Yeah, basically we have a national human resources development strategy in place. And in fact, there are uh, highlighted at various stakeholders what roles they need to play. In our case, we have worked closely with the Commonwealth Secretariat base in London, uh, who has assisted us in developing after detailed research and consultations with the private sector and other stakeholders, training manuals. And so far to date, we have trained 20, 60 packs of trained trainers, uh, whereby 20 were trained here in Vintuk, other 20 were trained in Swakopmund, and other 20 in Ondangwa. So we have almost a, a spread of trained trainers, uh, which we are looking at ways how we can 
uh, introduce them to the industry. So, that so those can trainers are expected to go out and train other people? Uh, other trainers, but of capacity. course for the people who would want to have their staff members trained, of course there has to be a fee charge, but of course the, train, the trainers were trained uh, free of charge. Again, we are saying uh, coming closer to the adventure world travel market, we would try and see how we would uh, be training the taxi drivers, but I think in the long run, the program needs to be uh, not only be focused to the accommodation or tourism sector per se, but it should include petrol service providers and so forth. So we are to engage later on with the petrol service provider, bigger companies, how they can get on board and have their petrol attendants play uh, a role and can be trained because they are key as well in this whole chain, where especially we have a self-drive market segment and tourists can ask questions and they need to be directed. We had incidences at petrol service stations that cars were uh, broken into and things were stolen. So these kind of issues need to be yes. addressed uh, head on. You spoke earlier, Madam Petzold, about people becoming our ambassadors when they go back to the countries that they come from. How about, because I hear Mr. Nawib clearly about Namibians becoming those very same ambassadors for our country and then taking responsibility for every tourist that then arrives in Namibia. If you could just speak to that uh, mm -hmm. in a few minutes, because that would deal with issues of crime and service delivery again. Um, Hilda, I believe that Namibians are sometimes still a bit ignorant uh, about the role of tourism, and they, they per perceive it to be an industry for, for other people, for other people, for an exclusive. So it's still seen as something that is yeah. of luxury. And and Han, some three four years ago, I, th I think in 2009, we launched a campaign which we called the Han Tourism Awareness Program, where we target the youth because we feel that. They are the leaders of tomorrow, so we're yes. targeting them and making them aware. And we take them to hotels or to guest farms or lodges and make them live through a day in the life of a tourism operator or a hotel year or whatever. And the quotes that I have from there is, you know, something like, ma'am, I was never interested in tourism because I didn't understand the concept. But uh, now I see that the world is in tourism. And then we make sort of career paths for them. And they, one lady said, one, uh, I think she was on the junior council, she said, I don't want to do the cooking and cleaning, but I'll go into marketing. I want an office job. But I see... All of that can be found in tourism. And that's something very important. People must start realizing that they are already part of tourism and they can make or break our tourism sector. Absolutely. So if yeah. they don't rob and steal people, if they are friendly and nice, and it starts at the airport's company, basically at the airport, where income is and also Namibians returning home. It's sometimes so, so warming to see a smiling face on, on an immigration officer. And it should happen every day. It should be so inborn. And I know in, in, in South Natural. Africa, yeah, in South Africa, and to, to come back to a quote of one of the audience or the interviews that you yes. did, where they said in South Africa it almost seems natural. It was not, in fact. They, yes. they had a major campaign before 2010, the before World the Cup. World Cup. Yeah. And that carries through. It's actually such a pleasure. And Namibia is always called, you know, the smile on the face of Africa. But very often I was told by people that we are actually very rude, that we don't smile, that we, we are very confrontational. We're not as warm and hope open as, as we would like our people to to be and I think that's that's where it starts it starts at home if we all become accommodating not only putting somebody to bed somewhere but be friendly be helpful if you meet somebody on the street because the essence of tourism is that it's an experience exactly exactly and a, and a warm experience I mean in, in to be developed beautiful brand phrases for for our tourism that soulful liberating experience that's what people come here for they want to leave the hustle and bustle of their own environment and even I if I want to leave the hustle and bustle of my own work and go yes. to my most favorite Spot and sorry for all the rest, but to sit on the dunes, look at the Atlantic Ocean, that's my favorite spot, and that's where I sort of regenerate. Yes. Um, and that, that kind of experience can be made possible if, if other people come to the party and also make you feel at home, and that's, that's the key message. Wonderful. And it's easy. It's easy. We'll hear a little bit later about how easy it is. <laughs> we want to talk to you about issues of pricing, we would like to talk to you about affordability, etc. But while we're talking about competition and creativity in the service delivery, the challenge, one can say, is more on the SME players to rise to the occasion. Claudine Mouton, co-director of SME Compete, joins us on the line. Good evening, Claudine. Welcome to Talk of the Nation. Good evening. I'd like to hear from you first and foremost, Claudine. How does SME Compete strive to capacitate SME players in domestic tourism, enable for them to become recognizable, world-renowned brands? Uh, well, the tourism sector is but one of the just short of 50 clusters that SMEs compete work with. We work with examples with SMEs operating in the apparel and textile, leather goods, arts and crafts, upholstery, bakery and related services, and many other clusters. Uh, we, of course, see the tourism sector in a broader context, 
as we are very keen on forming linkages between, for instance, an upholsterer providing soft furnishing to an accommodation establishment. So you're talking now, about specifically, linkages specifically? Specifically, yes. yes. But, um, but to get back to your question specifically on how we capacitate SMEs, yes. we provide training so that their skills are upgraded. We do business status regularization so that businesses move from the informal to the formal sector. And then on the legal side, we draft partnership or members agreements. Uh, and very important also, we identify sources of supply. And of course, to what I previously referred to, we form business linkages, not only between SMEs, but also linkages between SMEs and large firms. You obviously aware of the upcoming Adventure Tourism and Travel Summit, which will take place, like Mr. Nawib said, in October this year. I'd like to mm -hmm. find out specifically, specifically from your organization, how can your members or those that you train from time to time, how can we ensure that these ones, these members of yours translate all the brilliant ideas from this platform? Because obviously we will have lots of learnings from this opportunity into their own future success stories. Well, I think that is the million dollar question because everyone has a different need that we must discuss with the individual client and then we take it from there. Small businesses must seek guidance, advice, and become clients of SMEs Compete and other business service organizations, thereby receiving routine mentorship. Yes. Small business owners must also have the confidence to share their ideas with others. Now, these small business owners normally have got, a, have got they're scared that their ideas will be shared with others. Yes. But SMEs co Compete, for instance, has a confidentiality agreement with small businesses not to share their information with others. So we urge them to come forward so that their needs are established and met. Thank you very much for your contribution. Please continue with the good work you are doing at SMEs Compete. Mr. Nawib, um, again, to come back to you, um, issues around pricing and affordability. We obviously want people to come here, but sometimes people just frankly say Namibia is a fairly expensive destination. Is that true or is it just perception? Yeah, before I get onto it, let me just uh, contribute to what uh, Claude Claudine was saying. Yeah. From our side as a tourism board, we have also for the last three years been working on a what you call new venture creation entrepreneurship program under the Center of Entrepreneurship Development with the University of Vets Business School. And we have so far trained almost, the next group is about to graduate now around about 3rd April, April or 4th April. I was so far almost in the region of about 60 people of which we have quite good success stories. Uh, for example, the person that went through their training program uh, set up a very great, excellent product, which so is... So it's really so that you could build capacity? Yeah, capacity You've building. spoken earlier about the yeah. collaboration with the Polytechnic of Namibia, for example, yeah, capacity and now building, be, yeah. there is this one. And then we do a one-week exchange program with the uh, into South Africa with uh, SMEs that went through the similar training so that they exchange ideas and issues and how they implement at the end of the day uh, is the... Uh, uh, the, the inspiration of the entrepreneur really to get that to off the ground. But as to come into the pricing, in general, it depends what level of product are you looking for. Because if you're looking in, the, for example, in the accommodation sector, we start off a basic camping right through up to luxury lodges. Mm -hmm. So if you really are into camping, of course, $60 per person per night. So basically if, what you're saying is Namibia offers the total range. Yeah, and this, this has also come across from the World Adventure Travel Summit that we've been dealing with. Uh, I think they, we've been told to keep your prices as normal as they are because they are far more affordable than what has been happening uh, in other countries where this type of event was hosted. So we are within the margins, but besides that, uh, the industry has gone out of its way together working with NTB because we are printing the brochure but the industry offers the discounts which and then we run competitions on basis of that to make people aware that they can take on spe specials and currently there is a special running for those who want to go to Easter. If they had made the good deals then of course they can get cheaper accommodation. Affordability, your membership? Yeah, Namibia, I mean, we had this exercise before when, you know, the, the international economic crunch hit, hit the world. Yes. Um, people very often compare, and tourism is a very, very competitive industry. I mean, yes. we compete with, is it 180, is it 200 different other destinations mm -hmm. worldwide? Um, so people obviously go and shop for prices and they look at two weeks in the Caribbean and compare that to Namibia. Yes. And us being a long-haul destination, obviously pricing always also affects the transport 
to get here. But we actually made a study some five, six years ago when first there was this critic that Namibia seems to be outpricing itself. And like you said, we have the, the wide range of, of accommodation and ways of, of travel that really there's something for the shoestring budgeter, there's something for, for the five-star gourmet who wants to come and experience Namibia. And that uh, same should be said to, to the local Namibians. Many Namibians always claim that, yeah, tourism is only for the rich people and for the, for the foreigners because there's nothing for us. We can't afford to go to lodges, for instance. Now, it very often happens that, yes, the more affluent, the more expensive accommodation establishments or operators, they have, or they also invest and spend money on yes, marketing. So yes. they are in so your face. Seen, they they're are visible. Exactly. Yeah. But if you really do your homework, and I know lots of Namibians are so well connected to social media these days, that there are so many offers on other platforms that can be found that are affordable. That I, I would like to claim here tonight that there is something for everyone. One just has to need and, and look around. But there is really um, an affordable way of, of traveling in your own country. And that so should absolutely, be you're talking exploited. to issues of mindset, the way we need to look at things that, you know, that really anybody and everybody can afford mm. to take the family away on a holiday. Yeah, camping is an experience in itself then really try to, because what you get to see with the Namibians is that the trend that really they sort of have some sort of a phobia or a fear to camp. But I think <laughs> camping as a family is really an experience in itself. I promise you, Mr. Nalbib, I will not be one of those Namibians <laughs> who will be doing the camping. But nevertheless, exactly we will my point. talk. But, but there are <laughs> plenty other opportunities, I, will, I promise you, in tourism that I will make use of and do make use of. But maybe just for to go into our next segment of the topic, uh, the importance of networking coordination has been emphasized throughout this evening. Well, one group that facilitates that in local tourism is Team Namibia Tourism Expo. Every year, Team Namibia Tourism Expo brings players and stakeholders together under one roof. We had the opportunity to talk to organizers Glenda Manthley Hrobler and Tira Nangolo. Take a look much value in networking whereas you you come to the namibia tourism expo not knowing what what is on offer let's take a local person for example that's visiting the the expo for the first time you come there with an idea of saying okay i want to travel around my country but i don't know where to start you can go to the namibia uh, tourism bot stand they would give you the the information as a starter whereas they can tell you okay this is the this, this is on offer. They have a little booklet called, uh, I'm not sure, it's domestic tourism, where they have all those um, little places advertising in that book with uh, discounted um, prices. And uh, they explain to you where to start. They can tell you, okay, fine, if you want to go camp camping, you contact those people. And then that's where you start off. And then you can take another route where you go to, let's say, um, the conservancies that have uh, camping sites on their, on their properties. I mean, there are lodges, but they have camping sites there. They, they, they are the, the market for, for a startup person when you want to enter into traveling around your country. You can't, you can't just go from, let's say, you want to travel, but then you want to start high. You have to first see where you can afford. There's a perception, it's expensive, it's expensive. And then if you look at the offers um, that, 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 that lodges are also putting out there, uh, bed and breakfast uh, uh, facilities, it, you, you might actually get a pleasant surprise if you actually come to the Tourism Expo and see, oh wow, I didn't realize that. Um, but prices are coming down, prices are coming down to enable us as Namibians to travel within our own country. Currently our people locally, I mean, they, they don't have an interest in tourism because when they, when they hear the word tourism, they think, okay, I have to fork out money. So they, this, 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 this is putting Namibia on, out there as a country that have all the landscapes, all the beautiful stuff that you can see. I don't know how many people have traveled in the rest of Africa this is a complete and utter gem. And I, I'm not surprised that, that Namibia was selected to host the World Adventure Summit. I mean, it is a phenomenal country. It is a phenomenal country. Perfect. Yes, very perfectly put. Um, I think what we'd now like to focus on, um, actually Tira, I think she mentioned it specifically, and she talked about conservancies. 
And I think Namibia is considered a global leader in terms of its conservancy policy. Maybe just for a moment talk about the uniqueness of that and how this contributes to sustainable development in the country. Yeah, basically in conservancies is mainly, obviously we have a three-tier ten land tenure system in our country. We have the government state land, which is the protected areas such as the national parks, and then we have uh, um, commercial land or land holding where people can set up their farms or the town land where municipalities or cities own land. And then you have what used to be called uh, homelands or uh, communal areas, yes. uh, which were named after different tribe and groupings that were assigned to those areas. That is the area which now currently focuses mainly on conservancy. Uh, basically what the government did as part of the policy was to after independence, of course, quite a lot of wildlife were exterminated to reintroduce wildlife. Yes. And to do that, of course, people had to be educated so that they benefit out of looking after this wildlife and, and so not, only, yeah, and not yeah. only seeing it as yeah. meat that has to go yes. into the pot. Yes. And basically, but something that you can look after and from which you can generate funds. But it's not only the uh, wildlife that they are looking at, it's also other um, crafts and other things that they are selling. And now, in fact, they are getting into joint ventures with a private entrepreneur who sets up a lodge or a tourism-related activity from which the communities are getting bed night levies and other income. And equally also, the arrangements are that the locals are to get the first preference, of course, at the lower level jobs to be employed where there are management jobs needed. If people are well educated in that area, they could stand a good chance to be employed. So basically, in a nutshell, um, is that, that the total conservancy is meant to conserve the environment, but of course, bringing in the element of the tourism to generate jobs as well as income to improve the living standards of the people in that uh, communal or that community, basically, within what used to be called uh, communal areas formerly. Brilliant. In a minute, we'll give you a chance to share your views with us, but this is how some Namibians assess the general state of domestic tourism. The funny thing is with all the economical situations worldwide, the people outside Namibia can't afford it, and the people inside Namibia also can't afford it because it's too expensive, and now the industry is in, 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 in shambles. It's actually now the owners of the leisure places probably provide a, a special offering rates for those who cannot afford like now the general ones. Perhaps there should be a, a subsidizing thing introduced when it comes to uh, local people. It's my first time in Namibia so what I've, I've experienced is it's a lot of I get a lot of uh, international vibe, it's a fresh um, take on stuff and um, especially coming from South Africa, I enjoy all the little interesting places and restaurants. So definitely I would say it is up to standard, yes. You seem very happy to hear that, that it's up to standard. Can mm -hmm. I hear your contribution please to what she just had to say? Yes, indeed. Um, I think it's, it's good to see that our efforts are not going unnoticed. Yes. Um, it is really um, enlightening as well to see um, that we do have our neighbors commending us that we are really up to standard. And I think it's up to us Namibians to really be interested, get interested in our own um, tourism markets. Um, we need to go and go find out what the industry has to offer. For example, um, like Dugu was saying, it is relatively um, affordable to travel within Namibia. We traveled um, throughout Namibia, I think, um, a year back, and we drove virtually throughout, you know, um, Waterberg, through Atosha, through um, the formerly known as Damaraland, and yes. we did it at an affordable budget. Yes. So we need to get interested. Let's, you know, when there are campaigns there, let's, let's try and find out more what um, the industry is trying to offer us. Um, and I think there is definitely now a lot of effort being done to market Namibia to its own Namibians to travel. So let's take um, this opportunity and, and, and travel and see Namibia. Very good, but it, it, it still seems to me, because we looked at that incident just, in uh, just a moment ago, and Namibians still have this almost schizophrenic view on tourism. One person said the industry is in shambles. shambles. We <laughs> think that 
it's going fantastically well. We've listened to so many contributions. The lady from South Africa that just complimented Namibia on how well we're doing as a country. Where's the information gap? Why do not everybody in the country think that it, this is fantastic and that we're doing fantastically well? I suppose it always comes down to what you expect. I mean, some people come from a high level mm -hmm. and have, yes, noted, because if, if I look at, at my figures and Han collects figures on, on occupancy statistics, for instance, and yes, we have seen a dip since 2008, which seems to have been our bumper year, and I think and you can And it obviously for that. can be attributed to the, to the international, to the international um, fair, but yeah. we also have to make sure that we, and I'm, I'm so pleased to hear that South Africans actually praise us, and that's one of the benefits that, that we can count ourselves so lucky in Namibia, because they always call Namibia to be the Africa light product, mm -hmm. that we have all the excitement and the, <laughs> the, so the, the secrecy of, of an African country, but we've got the convenience of a th first world, world country in terms of our infrastructure, in terms yes. of uh, um, communication. It's so easy to travel in Namibia. Even if you don't have a car, yes. there are shuttle buses. There are uh, enough of, of, of the yes. taxi concerns that they take you from, from central to north or to the coast. So, so in your view? the industry is not in shambles. Definitely not in shambles, but I mean, it is a challenging business. It always is because yes. competition is high. Yes. And yes, everybody wants to venture into tourism and everybody thinks, and I think that's where the perception sometimes goes wrong, that tourism is a very easy way of making money and that it is not. Tourism is uh, some, only somebody with passion can actually make a success in tourism. And it's not al always an easy industry to work with, but it's fun if you have the right attitude towards it. Yeah, and as we early said, it depends on your needs and wants as the person, what type of accommodation you want. Because all, most of the time, people tend to go after the sought after type of accommodation, four to five star hotels and lodges, which that certainly is uh, bet out on the pricing margins from what the person can afford. But we do have all other range of the accommodation uh, provisions that we have in the country and possibly yes indeed there are programs for example Namibia Wildlife Resorts gave yes. Namibians 25% yes. discount. Yes. The Gondwana group have a go card mm -hmm. which you can subscribe to as a member and you get 50% discounts mm -hmm. at times so there are some initiatives possibly as you probably say Hilda maybe we have to see a way how we can package and mm -hmm. get this information in the face of the people mm -hmm. uh, possibly that might probably be the issue but I think that is something but there is availability mm -hmm. and affordability as far as that is concerned and industry has come to the party to give a discount especially normally they last for a year yes. once we print that book it runs for a year mm -hmm. so there, your prices are more or less discounts are committed by the industry but it depends yes. on the availability yes. of those rooms mm -hmm. whenever you want to travel so pre-planning is required yeah, pre-planning mm -hmm. is very great we're slowly coming to the end of the program. We're still waiting for you at home to call us. Have you forgotten our telephone number? It is 291-3322. Please call us. We'd like to hear your voice before we close off this program. But as we round off slowly, a special message to Namibians at the occasion of our 23rd independence, the opportunity that is being presented to us by the Adventure Travel and Tourism Summit that will take place at the end of the year. And then also just from you, Mr. Nawib, I'd like to hear how we're keeping pace with international trends, uh, etc. Just to slowly round up the program. Yeah, probably to start off with the international trends, of course, the social media is the in thing. Lately, people are Facebook and uh, they are Twittering. And as part of the MCA project, uh, we have actually, uh, Namibia Tourism Board was running that program. Uh, we've been training the tourism industry people that showed interest in how to use those platforms to be able to market their products because uh, nowadays printing brochures, you need to distribute them, it is costly, whereas this is a very cost effective way. So yes. that is one way of dealing with it. Uh, what we are also looking at is again, the niche markets have come quite uh, prominent products at the end of the day. So Namibia being, the, that's why we are now into this adventure tourism thing to educate because it's no longer about uh, looking at scenery, wildlife, but obviously people nowadays want to get engaged uh, to immense themselves yeah. and experience the destination through having discussions and communications with the local cultural people, experiencing their cuisine and so forth. So again, this is a product that we need, yes, the, of course, not Namibia and uh, as Namibia Tourism Board, but the private sector to package it and then we can take them out to the world. Again, we are working on... Can uh, I just interrupt you? We've got somebody from Walfers Bay online, our very first caller this evening. Good evening and welcome to Talk of the Nation. Uh, thanks, Hilda. Uh, I just want to find out what are the procedures for 
I'm just establishing a small uh, business. In the tourism as field? A service, yeah, in the tourism industry. So mm-hmm. I just wanted to find out what are the procedures to uh, to get my uh, business or my guest house up to the standards. So Thank whom should I contact to, to give me the right advice? Thank you. We'll pass on that question to Mr. Yeah, Nawabi. He'll right respond to you right now. Would be the Namibia Tourism Board. We do have, uh, it's by law, it's prescribed by law. Yes. So there are regulations that set out exactly the standards in terms of the size of your room, the furnishing that you ought to have, uh, how you have to position things in your room. Those are the standards. And we have those, we even have the booklet. So if you contact the inspectorate department or division at the Namibia Tourism Board, they should be able to. And in fact, you can even make an appointment because they usually travel yes. to visit us, uh, Wolfis Bay, and they can pass by you and give you the information face to face and you can ask questions as well. So just. Uh, but basically, the person can contact Namibia yeah, yeah, Tourism, Tourism Board, Board tomorrow yeah. morning, yeah. speak to somebody, get it sorted out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Good. We've got another caller, Mr. Kashita from Winter. Good evening. Good evening. Ah, madam. Ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, madam. Yes, mine is more a concern. I would just like to inquire. We've got so many graduates in tourism that are lying around. I would just like to know, is there anything that is in the pipeline in terms of um, using these tools to, 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 to empower Namibia and obviously also to advertise Namibia? Thank you very much. You're welcome. Gita? Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a very good question, and I like the phrase that the graduates are lying around because definitely we don't want graduates lying around. Um, there is um, a bit of a, uh, I don't want to call it a, a, a conflict, but uh, very often, in, in especially in the tourism or hospitality field, um, the perception of quality or qualification is very often construed with theoretical knowledge and yes. especially on the hospitality side the practical knowledge is so much more important and we've had interludes together with the NTB and, and the private sector as well that we went to the tertiary education departments be it the UNAMs or the polytechnics to make sure that the the, the, the format in which um, knowledge is, is shared with, with the students is actually made so practical that people from, from where the world go can actually start working in the tourism industry because we've had these very graduates um, at the end of a three-year either diploma or, or even a, a degree course that have never carried a plate, for instance. Now, these people cannot be used in a yes. hotel because it's a given that if you are in the hospitality industry, you, you are trained to serve and to make beds and that kind of thing. And very often we found that, that especially, and there are beautiful courses in, in both our tertiary education pr- programs um, that are very concentrated on the theoretical part of it. And it's very important for these graduates to make sure that they even start on, on a, a practical level to yes. get a job, like we call Interning. it. In, in turn yeah. to, to work yeah. yourself in, because very often the, the, the job is not the, so much the title that you have, but the way that you exercise your 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 talents and I always want to call it talent because yes. in hospitality it's a talent and it's a way of doing things because you've got to have the passion for it stuff exactly the passion yeah. the attitude and passion is what you need in tourism and then qualifications come if you reach the higher level but Diego mentioned it right at the beginning of our program that he says tourism actually has opportunities for everybody if you want to take them and you can start off even if you don't have a, a, a secondary education closure a matric or whatever you can actually enter into tourism and work yourself up Wonderful. that's the beauty of it Wonderful. Susan from Literates, good evening. Welcome to Talk of the Nation. Good evening, ma'am. Please go ahead. My question goes to Mr. Nabi. I want to know what does he think about our lovely town, Literates, in terms of tourism, and uh, what has been done so far to promote the South, in particular the town of Literates. Thank you very much for your contribution, Mr. Nabi. Yeah, basically, if you look at our website on the top 10 destinations in Namibia, Lutheran's features under one of, uh, as one of the top 10 destinations must to be visited uh, if people are visiting uh, the country. Uh, at the end of the day, as I said, yes, uh, we can, as a Namibia Tourism Board, uh, market the country. Our job is to do generic marketing. Yes, for the but destination. But at the end of the day, it becomes the job of a tour operator, especially for those who take FIT or fully paid packages, that they are planning that and they are routing that, uh, that they are developing those routes. So that's one of it, one of the issues. The other is also, again, that you have to self-drive people 
and of course some of the challenges was the distance yes. that people have to drive and things that they have to do along the way of course because there's not much to do but again we are doing our level best as a tourism board to uh, continue to market the destination in fact we are so much involved in the cray fish, fish festival, festival for example yeah. mm -hmm. but with the hope with the if the waterfront is fully developed and fully fledged and the hotel school that are planned are developed and I think things will be better because people just need to because generally people do sleep in Lutherans between one or two nights mm. and then they're off mm. or from again from the destination but quite a lot has to be done in terms of infrastructure development yes. to keep people busy mm. while they are there mm -hmm. You've got great plans at the Namibia Airport Company for the expansion of Hoseo Kutako International Airport. Yes, we do. I'm one of the ones who are standing way in front because that airport at the moment is so congested. Maybe you could just, by way of closing up your contribution, just tell us what your direct and immediate plans are and how that impacts uh, attracting more people to this beautiful country. And then finally, your independence message. Um, maybe just to give you a brief um, snapshot with regards to the um, expansions at Hosea Kutako is that we're looking at um, having the um, departure hall enlarged for now. These are just the interim measures. Obviously, um, the master plan will kick in um, once um, everything is in place. But we are currently looking at expanding um, um, the departure areas and also the check-in counters just for the increased passenger yes. facilitation, which is definitely key. And also to increase the product offerage that we have at the airport, product and services. I think it's key that we always have to listen to our passengers. What do they need? What do they want again? What else can we offer to make it a pleasurable experience for them? So that is what we're looking at. And on an annual basis, we have a customer satisfaction survey where we want to find out from our passengers what it is that they want from the NAC. Uh, and besides the expansion plans, um, we're also having um, the terminal buildings at Ondangwa yes. Airport and Wafish Bay Airport yes. that are in construction. Yes. And that again is just to have, um, you know, facilities that are world-class, yes. um, that are up to standard, and also in all of it to enhance the um, the, the travelling experience. I think that is very key, yes. um, that our passengers, our tourists, our business travellers, everybody coming through our uh, terminals, we need to make it an experience that yes. is unforgettable, but also an experience where they need to get to know about Namibia. So we're also making space available for would-be um, prospective clients where they can advertise their, their facilities or their products or their services. After all, it yeah. is Namibia. And Your independence message our in independence three message seconds. <laughs> <laughs> is um, Namibians, please do travel. Um, please experience the beauty of that Namibia has to offer. It's a once... Uh, once in, a was yeah. once in a lifetime, yes. but please take your children, take your family, and let's see the beautiful country of ours. Madam Petzold, you have two seconds to say two happy seconds. birthday, Namibia. Well, the, Only happy birthday, Namibia. The 21st of March is our birthday, but yes. it's also time for us to reflect and to, to realize how lucky we are to live in a country like Namibia. And basically, you have one second. as you are <laughs> traveling to Oshakate, I believe a lot of us where the main event will take place, please note that you would be a domestic tourist as mm -hmm. traveling mm -hmm. and take care and drive safely because we need you to contribute to this nation so that we realize Vision 2030 mm -hmm. and NTB4. Thank you. Namibia, the smile on the face of Africa. On that note, we greet you, we bid you good night and remember as per the theme of the Adventure Tourism and Travel Summit, imagine, inspire and invest. We see you next week, same time, same place. God bless Namibia. Until next week, good night.